Welcome back to another review. And today I'm gonna to take a look at Simplified Drawing for Planning Animation by Wayne Gilbert. I have way too many books that talk about drawing and how to teach drawing because I'm really not good at it. Like I like the feeling of holding something and I like drawing, I'm just not really good at it. And by not really good, I mean not at all. But I wanna go back, I wanna go back to learning the fundamentals and the beginnings because I just, I just wanna make better and it helps me with the critiques and it helps me communicate my thoughts better. So I wanna go back and I got a ton of books, but one I wanna go back to is this one because it is simplified and it's something that you can hold on to. It's small, it's not a ginormous book that kind of really feel like this is gonna take me forever to go through and the structure is interesting and the content is cool so let me show you how this works so as you open this oh i forgot this is really old so you got uh the dedication cylinder and the thank you note and as you can see bring this over here this is from 1999 it's 21 years old you can still order it i'm more on that later as you see this you see the intro and then it talks about the structure and you can see that weirdly it starts at three to one and it explains why this is like this and you can see well, that's weird. Chapter three, it's mainly because it goes straight into the nitty gritty and the interesting aspects of the drawing. And he knows that. He says that you're going to get this, you're excited to get it, and you're going to dive into this way too quickly. But if you want to do that, you can do this and go through the book like this. But what he recommends is to actually go to the back. So as you go backwards, now start here and work your way to the front of the book. So you can see that he starts with practice. Practice for lines, practice with circles, warm ups, and starting to think in a more structured way in terms of three dimensions for sphere, cubes, perspective, and not really skipping anything. It really goes into details how to think in terms of shapes. Then we're getting into figure drawing. So then it gets into, well, think about the structure, simplified anatomy, center of gravity with important sections like balance. There's a clip that I did about balance that talks exactly about that. You gotta be careful about that. And getting into the shape. So it starts with the head, different proportions, different sizes, how you can do variations of it. Of course, all in a simplified way so you can get your drawings out quickly. Going into hands, arms, feet, torso on the shoulder, the legs, twist in the torso. You can see the line of action and the change, so the S-curve in the spine, all with the focus on simplification. And if you want more, there are many, many examples here of other books that I actually sadly own and don't look at enough or at all. I love getting books and I look at them, they're great. And then I go, yeah, and then I put them aside and then, okay, that's the problem that I have. But if you want more, there's more information there. There are more detailed books and studies. Getting into the next chapter where you start seeing kind of like the rough planning, storyboards and how like, simple you can keep things while still telling a story and looking at a lot of examples. So there are classic jump, land, recover. He goes into weight lifts as well. So details in terms of posing, with even like differences what the arms are doing. Again, focusing on balance, weight, and force, especially forces here. That's a very important topic in terms of like how your body leans. You can see here the line of action, but what the action is going to be with the before and after, the contrast and the movement. More examples like a box step, like a sit down and a get up is a classic exercise, even like a box step, like that's a good one to do. And it shows, just again, in simplified shapes, how you can do this, the weight, the weight shifts, the balance, what the arms are doing. Go into a classic flower sack, but again, different variations, but what is the height? What would happen if the box changes, if the position that the character needs to get onto is higher? Again, opposing forces, especially when it comes to a lift, like how do you hold it for contrast in different ways? how the body will react depending on where the center of gravity is and where the weight is located. Love all that stuff, really showing how you can do things, how you can draw your line, your line of action, what it means for simplicity. When you plan something, it's a good topic, animating force versus animating form. And then getting more into some details about posing, you have specific actions, how you can draw it, how you can show variations in the lines, in the body proportions. And I love this here, posing your character before planning your animation, which funny enough goes kind of into that topic that I posted just recently with the clickbait title, the biggest mistake that animators do. I know, I know that title. But again, looking at what the pose communicates and potentially fleshing out that first pose that will help you with the rest of the shot, the tone it sets, and the and maybe that first pose will help you plan other things and spark new ideas. So I like that this is actually covered here. I need to go read in this and for a refresher, outlining what makes a good pose. I love this too, like simplify, right? Super simple, but showing the differences in a lean or what the head is doing, the size, or if it's lower, what the shoulders are doing. Love all that stuff. Always reminding us to keep it as simple as possible research your work then we're back into chapter three and back into what I showed at the beginning so it's an interesting layout that you can start right away if you're really interested in the nitty-gritty you can start here or it's almost like I kind of go through books like this where I kind of 
through that. So it's it's actually nice laid out for that. And that's really why I like it because it is short and sweet. It has the basics in there, like a lot of variations and topics, but still something you can just grab with you and always kind of go through and refresh your mind without being like a heavy, heavy book with all kinds of topics. It is really nicely focused on simplified drawing for planning animation, as it says. Now, where can you get this? So if you go on Amazon and check out the book, there you go. So you got the paperback for $25. There's also a Kindle version. That's awesome for 10 bucks. Hmm. I want that on my iPad. And what? $987.25 for the spiral bound version? Really? Well, I'm not selling this. <laughs> but anyway, so lots of options. Kindle paperback, I guess, spiral bound, but other versions used one so it's a bit cheaper but cool to have it for 10 bucks as a kindle version i'm gonna put the link to that in the description and i'm gonna go through this practice drawing i have many many more books so as i'm going through i'm gonna bring out other books to review obviously also more advanced ones that i'm not there yet but i want to show what i got so maybe you but i'm sure many people probably like 99.9 percent .9 of people are more advanced than me and you might like those books i hope this was a helpful overview i've done other reviews there are more reviews coming things that are specific to animation and of course other things that are me learning out about things. So more stuff is coming. Feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss any of those uploads. Because I do reviews, I do shot reviews for my workshops, I do lectures, I do rib reviews, all kinds of stuff. So subscribe and like if you want to. If you're still watching this, as always, thank you for your patience to watch this and to stick with this until the very end. That's it for me, and I'll see you in my next upload.